Hey everybody, Freddy here with another video. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on something that was announced during Microsoft Ignite, which was on November 15, 2023, which is the Microsoft Copilot for Azure. Now that we live in the era of co-pilots, now we have a co-pilot for Azure. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking into it. We're going to see how we can get access to it. I'm going to be showing you the things that you can do and how this co-pilot is going to help us do a lot of things in Azure, which were you know, very time consuming before. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to talk about is the Azure, or the, excuse me, the Microsoft Copilot for Azure. Um, it's currently in preview, and what that means is in the Microsoft world, when it says that a service is in preview, what it means is that it's, it's here and is designed for testing and evaluation purposes. It has limited support. They, it has potential for changes because it is not GA or general availability yet. And it is also most of the time free or is um, you can get it at a reduced cost. So Microsoft Copilot for Azure is free as far as I know as of today, November, excuse me, December 14. So as of December 14, 2023, this service is in preview. You can apply for access. That's what they, this means. So if you go to your portal, you're, you're not going to see anything at the moment. You're not going to see the Copilot. When you go into your Azure portal and you don't have Copilot, this is what you would normally see. You'll see the Azure uh, portal with all the services and here in this corner, if you can see my mouse, it's right here on the right next to the search bar. Um, right here, you should see Copilot. So in this account, I do, in this tenant, I do not have Copilot. However, if I go to an account or a tenant that does have Copilot, this is what I would see. I would see a co-pilot little icon here that you can press and when you see that that means that your co-pilot is up and running. So let's go back to the information about Microsoft Copilot for Azure. It's in preview. You can try Azure for free. If you don't have an account you must have a tenant. Um, you must have an account which means that you must have a tenant. Once you have a tenant then you can apply for access to the Microsoft Copilot for Azure. Do you have to have a paid account to get access to the Copilot? No, I am the tenant that I'm going to be showing you. It is a free account. So that means that I applied for the Copilot and I was able to get it as well. So you don't need to have a paid account. However, you do need to have an Azure account. Once you have an Azure account, then you can click apply for access. The first thing that you're going to see is you're going to see this information. It's a blog that walks you through what Azure Copilot or this Copilot for Azure is. It tells you the benefits, uh, what it's designed for. Uh, it shows you some screenshots of things that you can do, which is something that I'm going to show you in this video as well. I ho it shows you that you can um, optimize cost because you can ask questions as far as performance and things like that. You can also ask for metrics information. Uh, so this is uh, uh, querying the Azure Graph Explorer. So there's a lot of things, uh, CLI scripting. So you can get lost in this whole blog and then in the end you have no idea what, how to get access to it. As you can see some of the comments here, every link that uh, to apply for, for access, it dumps you back into this blog so you can get, ac you can get lost. The thing is that if you scroll up a little bit and you go where it says what's next and in this section here you're going to see this little link that says click here to sign up. This is where that, that link is and it dumps you into this form where you can enter your first name, your last name and then you enter your tenant ID. One of the things that you have to that you, that you need to do. You cannot use a Gmail account. You cannot use a Hotmail account or Outlook or Live. Any of those will not allow you to get access to the Copilot. What you need is a corporate or a company name 
so the one that I use is buttonservices.com, which is a domain that I have. Uh, it's not a Gmail, so I was able, so that works. So as long as you don't use a Gmail or Hotmail account, you sh you'll be fine. You also need your billing account ID. It gives you information on how you can get that information. So you go to the portal and you can get that information, which is in here. And then you enter here. It tells you that your company email address, uh, application submitted with a personal email address like Gmail, Hotmail, Outlook will be denied. And this is what I was talking about. So you have to use a company ID, otherwise it's not going to work. Then once you do that, You agree to the terms, you enter your company name, and then you click submit. And then you wait for a few days and then eventually you will get a response. And what you will see is you will see this copilot here. It's going to show up in your portal. So what do I have here? I have a, a tenant that I created with a button services account. And the first thing that I can see is I have a copilot here. So what do I have running in this tenant? Anyway, I have two virtual machines run. Both of them are running. One is Windows, one is Linux. Windows is running on a B2MS. The other one is running on a B1S. Both have public IP addresses, both on the same subscriptions. And that's pretty much it. That is all I have so far in this tenant. What things can I do? Let me go ahead and click on Copilot. And what I get is I get this thing on the right hand side. Hello, Freddy, how can I help? And I can ask questions. I can say, I would like to get a list of all the VMs that are running Windows in my environment. Can you help me with that? I don't need to say, can you help me with that? But I always do anyway. <laughs> so I just ask, what are the VMs that are running Windows in my environment? Can you help me with that? So what is that gonna do? It's gonna go through and it's gonna say, oh yeah, I can do that. And what you need to do is you need to run this query. And this query is gonna be like this, resource where type Microsoft compute virtual machines and property storage profiles or disk type equals to Windows. So you want me to run this, you can just click on the button that says run, and then I'm going to run this query. And then it's gonna show you the results here, and it's gonna tell me that I have one VM, which is a VM that is in West US 3, and it's production resource group, and this gives me my subscription ID, and it gives me all this information. And you see how easy that was. I don't need to type anything. I didn't, it created the query for me. I can further that and say, what is the status of my virtual machines? How can I upgrade my virtual machines? What is the cost of running this virtual machine? I can say, how many vCPUs is the VM called work VM how many BTPS in the VM called work VM running question mark let's see what it says Again, what it's going to do is going to create a query and the query that it's going to do is going to say, it's going to try to figure out how many CPUs are running. And the way that it does it is, it is very interesting. It is, it does it in two steps and let's see if it does it this time. So it figures out the size of the VM and then it goes out to the, and it goes to the Azure documentation and it finds how many of the CPUs that family is specific family is running and it'll give me that amount. So the VM, the work VM is running with a size of standard B2MS, 
this size com corresponds to two vCPUs. You can explore all the queries results and da 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 da. da. Mm. So it goes out and it finds out finds this the family size and then it goes out and it executes the command and it checks to see how many CPUs are running on that CP, on that VM. If I wanted to find out how many Arc systems or how many hybrid systems I'm running, I can ask and I can type a query and I can say, tell me how many systems have the Arc agent installed in the, my environment. And the, what it does is it generates a query that it goes out to the Azure Resource Graph Explorer. It creates a query called Microsoft.hybrid.machines and it tries to do a to try to summarize to do a count how many I'm running and then it's gonna say that you don't have any because I don't have any. There are no systems with the Arc Agent installed in your environment. So same idea. So as you can see what it's doing is just querying the Resource Graph Explorer for all this information. The beauty of this is also that I can query the Log Analytics workspace so I can say what is the max CPU utilization of the work VM VM. A little redundant, but the name has a VM in it. So let's see what it does. So it says I'm in this case, I'm sorry, but the that the graphics word does not support this request. Can you query a log analytics workspace? Okay, so at this point, if I tell it to query log analytics workspace, it tells me that it's not capable of doing that at this point. So now we need to wait and see if that's something that will be added in the future. However, I'm I think it will be just because of the way that the thing that just because of the way that the that the service was advertised. But at this point, I can ask how much is this VM costing me? It'll be funny if it's not costing you anything because you're on a free account. <laughs> that will be very nice. Okay, open cost management scope picker to change the scope. can ask again how much is the work VM costing me per month okay you can scope subscription one there are no monthly charges for this product for this product virtual machine uh, from June to December and if you need to change the scope so it does know that it's not costing me anything because I'm on a free tier, but it does go in and tells you what are the, it will give you that amount if you ask. If I say, how can I save money running, running this VM? I want to see if it gives me information about re reserve capacity or reservations. Unfortunately, there are no cost optimizations recommendations available at, at this moment. However, if you have any other scopes, furthermore, I can only provide reservation and saving plan recommendations. So you, you can see other uh, cost saving suggestions. Go to advisor. So go to the advisor and then advisor of course is going to give me any any recommended cost saving things that i may be able to do so again that's just the very tip of the iceberg with copilot i think it's a great tool i love it just with what i can see so far so there you have it that is the azure 
excuse me, the Microsoft Copilot for Azure. It's a very quick introduction to the service, how, to, how you can get access to it, how you fill out the form, the things that you need, and how you can start using it right away to start querying data. Now, I know that we were not able to query the Log Analytics workspace. I hope that that is added in the future because that would be an amazing feature. Um, so if you have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comments down below. If you have any um, suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments down below as well. So until next time, take care and have a great time.